So we have recently experienced just an explosion of water hyacinth in Burnt Mill Creek. It completely covers the water, like 100%. So the, the warming of the water, the warming of the uh, air, and the uh, high nutrients, and the sunlight is what combines to make water hyacinth explode like that. It's a floating plant, so it doesn't have roots that connect to the soil. So it just floats along, and then it sticks to the banks and things like that. Just like with any other invasive species like, you know, fire ants, poison ivy, wisteria, things come from, you know, soil, bilge water from ships, you know, all sorts of ways. But now, that's really interesting is you can buy water hyacinth online for your pond if you want it in your backyard. There is a law in North Carolina that prohibits that, but it's technically, it's not enforced. So it covers the water, you cannot see the water. That's the first immediate impact. But what that does is it blocks the sunlight from going through the water. So if there's native vegetation or fish species or other aquatic organisms that require sunlight to live, that's not good because it shades them out. It takes up nitrogen and phosphorus from the water column, which is initially a good thing, but the problem is once it dies, it goes right back into the sediment. It also blocks out native species of plants, so everything you want, it just gets crowded out and then it'll die. There's a lot of problems with it. It is something we just don't want to have around. So we, we do not want to spray it with any type of even aquatically approved um, herbicide. That's just not a good practice because we actually want to physically remove it. We'll take it to the sanitary landfill at New Hanover County. It's a lined landfill and everything. It gets buried. We don't want to have it connected to anything that could contaminate it to where it, it could spread through its seeds. If you see it when you're around town in a water body, you know, take note, take some photos, figure out where you're located and let us know at Stormwater Services and we'll, we'll see if it's a private or public water body. If it's public, that's on us to look into. If it's private, well, the pro property owner would be responsible for it, but we could alert them to it. You could contact us through Facebook, our website, or our stormwater hotline. Just have the address, maybe a photo or two, uh, even better, the XY coordinates, which helps us really identify where it's located. Also, don't purchase this stuff. Purchase native aquatic vegetation.